This is Sneaker Gears. My name is Levi, and welcome to a professional Gears take where today we are looking at the worst five performing Jordans ever. And what got me thinking about this is two things. One, I just did a review on what I think is the best Jordan ever made, at least on court, as well as it is negative 25 degrees here in Chicago. It is freezing, and obviously, you're thinking, man, this sucks. All right, what are the worst Jordans? What are we thinking about? No, I have been thinking about this video for a while, so I don't know if I've given an order to these, but they are my top five worst Jordans. So we're gonna do it kind of numerically as well as in groups. So I'm gonna say your first group of Jordans is your one through six. And those are obviously your three, four, five, six, all use very similar cushion setups, uh, being very firm. They're obviously old school, they're very hard. And the worst Jordans of those I would say is gonna be your number six. I love the way it looks. It's a classic. It has a lot going for it. But if you guys try playing with those on court, they are super hard. I think harder than the rest, even when you break them in. I think the five was more comfortable. The four was more comfortable. So was the three. The six was just not that nice. And again, I like it, but not for on court and not for performance. It's heavy, it's clunky, and it's hard. So that's not number five, that's just one through six, what is the worst? All right, so the next group of Jordans is really your seven, eight, nine. And the reason for that is if we look at the 10, that's legit, it's a good performer. It was the first time they used a polyurethane and not just a, the EVA or whatever it is, but I know they switched the foam setups. Uh, 10, 11, 12, I think all the way through 16 are actually very legit shoes. So I can't really knock those at all. So seven through nine, what are the worst Jordans? And I'm gonna say nine. Nine is really uncomfortable, and I've talked to other Jordan heads, I've talked to other sneaker heads. Nine has a nice fitting upper, and you could say it's comfortable from the fit, has the fast fit system, they lace up, but the materials overall on most of the shoes is subpar. The traction is okay, and it's just super uncomfortable, similar to the six, maybe worse. So you have the six, you have the nine. We're gonna skip 10 through 16 because I think those are legit. So what are the top three or what are the next three? Let's get right into it. All right, so after the Jordan 14 and maybe the 15 because Tinker did do the 15, he was supposed to wear it, but obviously he left. You have the Jordan 17, 18, which are ones he played in. So this is when he came back and went on the Wizards. And of those, 19 is possibly one he would have played in, and I think that one's really nice, but obviously he went and retired again. So of those three, 17, 18, and 19, where these are Jordans that he played in, would have played in, the 17 is pretty bad, guys. Now, the 18 used a full link zoom and was super plush. You can tell this was 40 year old Jordan because they are really comfortable. And the same thing goes for the Jordan 19, except they upped the support and stability on that with also having a super comfortable shoe. The Jordan 17, they put a ton of stability into that shoe. It used an encapsulated heel air unit with a giant plastic shank. Uh, I'm sure it's really stable and it, it really quite is, but it was firm. It could cushion setup was okay. They tried to go the way of the 16 where you could use it casually and on court, but that shroud that you can put on top of it was really hard to get off and on, which just made it a pain. Now on top of that, at least at that time, it was really expensive with the suitcase. Very cool, but you're spending a lot of money on something that one, didn't really look that great, and two, was really uncomfortable. That might have been number one if I'm ordering things, but I'm not. We're just going numerically here. So number 17, is the third worst performing Jordan. Let's get into the top two or the next two. All right, so Jordans 20 through 27, I think are kind of the black hole of Jordan. And that seems quite a bit. 28 was when Tinker first came back. 28 is also where they brought that flight plate, Zoom Air, the technology was crazy. Uh, so going through 20 through 28, I can really do 27. I can talk about all of them, but the worst performing one, and this is not because I don't like the shoe. I think it looks incredible, but is going to be the Jordan 26 or from looking at it this is the jordan 2011 since they were going by years there now the reason i say that is the jordan 20 was the first jordan with no air 
still performed very well. It gave us kind of that pod dress up that CP3 used. Jordan 1, 21 and 22 gave us that interchangeable cushioning in the heel. Not that bad. Jordan 23 was a hallmark where that gave us some handmade elements, gave us full length zoom. Decent performer gave us the fingerprint traction, which was uh, uh, improved on with the Kobe nine years later. Working way up the Jordan 24 or the Jordan 2009 actually gave us kind of the predecessor to the flight plate system where it pushed you forward. Really cool setup. The Jordan 25 was with D Wade or the Jordan 2010. That again had a double full length zoom setup that was really comfortable. It had the circle there where it shows how Jordan can look through his defender, whatever. And the Jordan 27 was the second iteration of having a fully upgradable and changeable shoe where you can change the cushion, change the height. Really cool. I don't know if it was perfectly executed, but it started with the 26, which was horribly executed. So the Jordan 26 used a two different drop in cushion midsoles of which I actually like using in other shoes. The cushions themselves were not terrible. It also used what they said was a hand finished upper. So each one was slightly different depending on the color you got. I had the white and blue, which was kind of your wizards or all-star colorway. And I have the year of the rabbit and it's a good looking Jordan. I really like it. The traction is solid. The cushion is comfortable. There is no support though. There's nothing to really hold you in. They didn't quite think about that, which is why the 27, when they fixed it, you could see such a glaring hole in how they performed. That shoe, your foot would go off the footbed easily. You weren't locked in. It was kind of a bad performing Jordan. Again, I don't know where I would rank it as far as one through five, because the lockdown and the fit are so much better on say something like the Jordan nine, but the cushion and the traction on it was solid, but there was no support, no lockdown. The Jordan 26 is kind of a really bad version of performing Jordans, even out of that gambit of 20 through 27. All right, last Jordan, what is the worst or what rounds out our top five worst five Jordan on court? All right, so now we have 28 through 33. I think 28, 29, and 30 were all great performers. 30 was a letdown only because Sunshine was a 29.5. You guys can uh, agree with me or not on that. So didn't make it a bad performer, but obviously wasn't a great Jordan, but I'm not gonna knock it on court. Jordan 31, I think was a renaissance where they rebranded. It really gave us full length zoom, had a lot of good things going for it. Traction wasn't the best, but you can't really knock it for just that. Jordan 30 was up until this point one of my favorite Jordans well the 28 was as well uh, for on court so that leaves us with this year's Jordan 33 rounding out our worst performing Jordans of all time now where does it rank again I'm not gonna name that like hey this is the five this is four and I say this because just like all five Jordans that are really bad they do things that are really good as well the 17 had terrible cushion but really good support the nine again awful cushion but the fit is amazing and you can kind of go back and forth on all of them with that the Jordan 33 has amazing traction amazing support but for me it's just a heavy clunky overly engineered Jordan that didn't really fit a lot of people the way the mechanism lacing structure is if you have a wide foot or a high instep or anything other than a perfect foot just doesn't really work for you and on top of that you don't really feel the cushion it throws me back to what the Jordan 9 and the 17 were where maybe there's not bad shoe overall but when you're looking at Jordan's overall it really does take a huge step backwards where the Jordan 33 is definitely a letdown from what it was with the 32 31 and that whole segment right there so the five worst performing Jordans you have your six your nine your 17 your 26 or 2011, and your 33, all of which have glaring holes in performance in one aspect or another. I'm not gonna talk about off-court, I'm not gonna talk about significance, styling, just performance-wise, really all of them are let down in multiple areas. I'd love to see your list. Everyone tries to give your favorite, what's your top three, and there's so many elements of a Jordan as far as uh, memories, history. Uh, so if we break it down by just performance, what are your worst five? What do you think are the worst Jordans you've ever actually played in? Since nowadays, a lot of Jordan shoes people think of as casual or lifestyle. They're not even used on court, and that's a different conversation. 
patient. But those are my five. Let me know if you agree or disagree. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. It is freezing here in Chicago, so uh, help me out, guys. Send me your best wishes. Keep us in prayer. And I hope everyone in Chicago stays warm today. Really appreciate everyone who watches this video. Subscribe down below. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, all that blah, 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 blah. Really appreciate you guys, and I'll come at you later.